Okay, everyone. So the last thing we're going to do today is review um, how to understand different particles in the atomic mass. So we have our electron, proton, and neutrons. So we know electrons have a negative charge, negative one. Protons have a positive one charge. Neutrons have no charge. In terms of mass, okay, this is a relative mass. So what that means is protons and neutrons are the same. So they're the same weight approximately. The electron, even though I have here zero, technically it is not zero. Um, they are incredibly small. You would need about 2,000 electrons to equal one proton or one neutron. So they're so small we basically just say it's approximately zero. Now in terms of location, so electron cloud or orbitals, um, are where we find our electron and both proton and neutron are in the nucleus. Okay, so on the periodic table there are two pieces of information we can get. We have the atomic number. Okay, capital Z is just a symbol to represent that, but the atomic number tells us really two things. The number of protons in the nucleus and also the number of electrons. Remember, protons are always equal to the number of electrons. So carbon has an atomic number of six. That means it has six protons and technically six electrons, right? Phosphorus, 15, 15 protons, 15 electrons. So same thing for all of the um, elements. Now mass number, the mass number on the periodic table is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So that means if you want to figure out the number of neutrons, you'd have to take your mass number and subtract the number of protons. Okay, so let me explain this for a second. See how this has an element name, a dash, and then a mass number? Okay, these are representing what are called isotopes. We're going to go in more detail about isotopes on Tuesday um, after the family day long weekend. So don't worry so much about this. The main thing though is I want you to understand that if you have the mass number of an element, you are able to figure out the protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? So just to briefly go over what I mean by an isotope. So oxygen on the periodic table has um, an average atomic mass of 16, or 15.999, right? Um, so isotopes mean that you have different atoms that can have different numbers of neutrons. So for example, I can have oxygen with a mass number of 16, or oxygen with a mass number of, let's say, 15. Okay, so they are actually identical to each other. So the number of protons and, new, and electrons are the same. The only thing that causes a difference in the mass is the number of neutrons. So the proton number here would be the atomic number, which is 8. Okay, so would this one for oxygen 15. The number of electrons would also be 8. Remember that they are the same number. But the number of neutrons would be different. The neutron number for oxygen 16 would be 8, but for oxygen 15 would actually be 7. So this has one less neutron in comparison to 16. So remember how we got the number of neutrons is we take our mass number and we subtract our proton number. So uh, neutron number is always equal to you take your mass number, okay, your mass number, and you subtract the number of protons, which is your atomic number. So let's go back here for a second. So um, what this is saying, oxygen dash 18, that means we're being specific. We want to use the isotope of oxygen 18. Now, when you guys are working on your worksheet tomorrow in class, it's not specific about what isotope to use. So what that means is you're going to take the mass number from the periodic table. Okay, so these are examples being more specific for that specific isotope. So oxygen 18, so again, remember proton and electron should always be the same, and they are equal to the atomic number. So oxygen has 18 uh, mass number, but the proton number never changes. Arsenic has an atomic number of 33, the electron is always 33. Phosphorus is 15, electrons are 15. Now the neutron number can change because it depends on the mass. So 18 minus 8 is 10. 
75 minus 33 is 42, 31 minus 15 is 16. Okay, so again, we're going to review this concept of isotopes on Tuesday um, after the family day long weekend. But for now, just so you can kind of see what I mean by that, what you really need to know just to practice this idea is how to figure out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom.